So, Sir John, what would you like to talk about today? I, I was just going to take you out to the weed. Well, I got tell mine. me, what would you like to talk about? It's just stream of consciousness, man. Yeah, it's, nothing's off limits. But you and I are both talkers. That could be dangerous. Well, An hour and a half later, we might be. She's a good editor. That's true. You need to protect me from her because if she's, if she's yeah, she's she's brutal. Yeah, I know. She'll sneak up behind me and she'll like get a camera up there and zoom shot some yeah. nose hairs or something. That's, that's true. Well, I'll, I'll... Fix my hair. It can't be fixed. My hair is already fine, thanks. <laughs> she, she got a comb anyway. <laughs> so, so the sneaky part about her is, I can't say this for sure, but I'm 99% sure these cameras have already been rolling. Mm -hmm. That's how she rolls. Yeah. I know. That's yeah. that. <laughs> you see that? Very quiet all of a sudden. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very sneaky. She's got her own little B-roll. Mm. So I heard a, a, a rumor that you were going to start a second channel. I'm dying to know. Well, so, uh, yeah, I mean, getting your advice, a lot of advice. So the second channel called California Expat, it will be more everyday interviews with people. Uh -huh. I want to interview couples a little bit more uh, okay. because I see a lot of individuals. Right. But I also want to just take people around to some higher end stuff. Nicer restaurants, condos, maybe there you even go. some of the resorts or I don't really see much of that. People. Yeah. Or just doing everyday stuff but sometimes people might want to go out somewhere nice or see where sure a little bit you know mid to upper yeah on location type stuff yeah yeah it used to what be a thing think? yeah like it so maybe even we'll go have lunch or dinner somewhere and bring this one along to film us something oh, yeah. like that what do you think all right audio's fine audio's fine cameras are rolling already what a surprise what just is wound up obnoxious How's it going, guys? I got one of my very first subscribers here to be interviewed today. His name is Bart. Let's talk to him. Hello, Sir John. Hello, how are you? I am wet. <laughs> you are wet. So tell me what happened, because your shirt was looking pretty wet t-shirt contest earlier. Uh, yeah, well, it still is, come on. Uh, well, I took a second shower on the way over here. A so, little bit rainy. Yeah, the taxi driver couldn't find your bill. He says, all right, well, take me to the mall. I've got some time, you know. Oh, a block out of the Metro supermarket and uh, just all over me. Right. So I'm trying to weave through building, you know, uh, under the uh, the underpass, the, yeah. the viaduct, and trying to weave my way up here. But I still got a little bit wet. All right. It's going to happen here. Rainy season. It's the Philippines, yes. Yeah, so. so you had started watching my channel. I think one of my very first subscribers a couple years back, always leaving thoughtful comments. And you were based <laughs> where at the time? I was in California originally. Mm -hmm. And then I started having problems with my mother back east in Charlotte. She eventually passed away, but I was in Mexico after I retired from Caltrans, which California Department of Transportation. So I retired and I went to Mexico because I was not able to get into the fills at that point in time. Mm -hmm. It was locked down tight. So I had to wait that out and just bouncing around. I took camping trips. I did all kinds of weird stuff. Went back to work for a little while just to ease the boredom. Anyway, eventually made it over here. And, and that was like, the plan all along? Well, I was trying to get over here right after I retired, but it ended up being like a, a year and a half stretch where I couldn't get over here, so. Sure, sure. And nobody could get out either <laughs> for that matter. Yeah, very, very, very <laughs> tricky. So big picture, what's your plan? Is it to live in the Philippines? Or you still plan on traveling around? Oh yeah, uh, I'm in process for a, an SRV, which is, uh, Oh, God, senior retirement, I can't remember the name, uh, retirement visa, it's SRRV, just take my word yeah, for I don't, it. Yeah, I don't know what the extra R stands uh, for uh, either. Yeah, yeah. It, it messes me all up. 
but uh, essentially since I'm ex-military, I get what they call the uh, courtesy visa. So it's a fairly easy process for vets. Normal, it's either 10,000 if you leave a deposit in the bank and then there's 20,000 if you invest. Mm -hmm. But for military vets, it's 1,500. Right. Period. Done. Gotcha. So that's my intent, and yes, I'm going to stay here. Sure. So it seems like you've had a very interesting career in the military. We're at Caltrans for mm -hmm. uh, quite a while, and from what I know of you, it seems like you've traveled around a bit. Was that from the military or just wanting to visit other places? Kind of started early. I grew up between Raleigh and Denver, uh, two American cities, of course, and they're quite a ways apart, and they're culturally just totally the opposite. Sure. And originally uh, born in California? No, I was born in North Carolina Okay. in Raleigh. I was in the military, bounced around, lived in Guam and Utah. And I've lived in like 11 states and three countries. So in the process of getting there, uh, I got to California by the railroad. I worked for the late great Southern Pacific Railroad. I was a locomotive engineer. And that's what I, brought you to like 11 different states? Cal California. Well, that one got me to four. Okay. California, I just ended up staying after I kind of got downsized. The Union Pacific bought the Southern Pacific and it just, they made a mess out of the seniority and I was going to get docked anyway. So I moved to Amtrak, didn't like it there. Right. So I just ended up going off into all kinds of different endeavors. And Ended that's what brought you to the other seven states. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I bounced around. It's one of those things where everybody says, well, you're such a tumbleweed, you must like to travel. I was like, no, not really. Uh, sometimes you have to travel mm -hmm. to keep working. Mm -hmm. And if it's a, if you're a single guy, which I was for most of the time, uh, it's it's you can do that. Right. So it kind of makes you look like you're shiftless, but it's really, good logic because I need a paycheck. So sure. Yeah, I get it. I got to go to Salt Lake, get paid. So, you know, there you go. Sure. And that's one thing that I don't have to worry about here. I can stay in one place and mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's such a relief. But do you think you'll get bored? Because I, I mean, not that many people have traveled. 11 states is a lot of yeah. different states in the U.S. To, to live. I've lived in two, uh -huh. mostly California, Hawaii for a couple of years. Right. I guess this is my third country I've lived, US, Australia, now right. Philippines. So I'm uh -huh. a little bit of a wandering gypsy like you are. But I mean, you have me beat by quite a bit. That's a lot of states. But again, there again, you had a point to go to all these places. It wasn't like, oh, I think I'll go to the UK today. No, but it's sure. nothing like that. I mean, I wish I were as well healed that I could make those kind of choices, but sure. I'm not. I'm kind of working class stiff. <laughs> I have to go where the money is. So. so let me ask you this. So, you know, traveling a lot of states, traveling different countries, what was the road that brought you to the Philippines? Well, my first trip here was in the military. I passed through Clark when it was still open. It might open up again, I don't know. Uh, I was stationed in Guam, so I got through here several times. So I, I already knew Luzon and that part of, well, the northern reaches of Manila, which do not resemble anything uh, like what I knew back in the day. Okay. And I, was a, I was actually a little bit worried that it was gonna be kind of the same thing when I got back. I mean, I knew from my readings and research that it was going to be way different, way more modern, all that stuff. But I was kind of worried about the cultural aspect of it. So, so how, how is it different? Completely different. Okay, and, and how so? Back in the day, and you know, Angeles was a military town, so. And this is going back about when? 1985. Okay. <laughs> She wasn't even a twinkle in her mom's eye. Yet. The, the camera. Her mom might not have been a twinkle in her grandmother's eye. Yet. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're talking about the secret camera woman over here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So being in the military ran into certain situations where you kind of had to have a buddy to go off base because they were running games on you. Well, you had the the bar girls and you had all kinds of scams going on. Little kids would come feel your pockets and you know if sure. if you try to shoo them off, then the cousins show up. That stuff doesn't happen anymore, guys. So if you're my age and you remember that, don't worry about it. Especially here at Cebu, Manila, it doesn't happen either as far as I know. So it's way different. And so my fears were very much 
believed. But what was it? So having known those things from the past, what made you still think maybe the Philippines is somewhere that I would come back to? Well, I was, always liked the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the people are just warm hearted, gracious, and uh, you know, it's just a low stress environment. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't, as crowded as this place is, you don't see any anger. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind. You know, yeah. you would think that there'd be all this tension and stress and all, but it's, they've staved off enough of the bad parts of modern life that while being modern, which is kind of the weird thing, they don't take the problems home with them to a large degree. I mean, there's, you know, certain domestic problems, but I mean, generally speaking, you don't see it in the street. Mm -hmm. Very, right. very civil place. I mean, even Europeans come here and they're like, wow, this is really chill, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I mean, it's just such a different uh, living environment. Maybe the country's developed further since the 80s, but culturally, how By different? By far. I mean, sure. orders of magnitude. Yeah. It's still preserved enough of its cultural integrity. I want to say the traditions and everything else that it's still a very civilized place. Yeah. You know, we can say, well, the infrastructure, well, they're getting there. Mm -hmm. You know, and a few more typhoons uh, knock all this stuff down. They, don't, they, they will rebuild it in increments, and I'm, I'm going to be excited to see it. Yeah. The the new cities that are going up, uh, BGC up in Makati, Mondawi, Global City. Southward properties here, they're all modern. They're underground utilities. And once those get built up, then they'll go back and re retrofit, I would imagine, the older districts. And you know, this is where the rising tide lifts all boats, right? Yeah, I really am excited as well to see the South Road properties oh, in Cebu, different things and it's like happening that. Fast too. It's not like you're watching grass grow or paint dry. It's happening on a daily basis. I look out the window of my apartment and I watch cranes just Mm, 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 mm. Putting yes, it's like a Lego set. Yeah, and I was here it's during awesome. the whole lockdown during the pandemic, and mm -hmm. I would look out of our condo, kind of high mm -hmm. up, and just anywhere I would look, there would be huge cranes building very tall buildings oh, here. Yeah. So that didn't stop during the whole pandemic. No, nah, they kept going. Yeah, it's impressive. I it's it's kind of exciting to be a part of it. You know, you walk through this. And it's, so much activity. Some people don't like the urban scene. They want to go to a, you know, Valencia or a nice, you know, mountain enclave. Well, that's fine, but I, I kind of vacation in those environments. But for the things that I do, I kind of need more of an urban environment. So I'll be here in Cebu. Sure. So what made you decide Cebu over Manila, for example? It's right sized for me. Mm -hmm. Manila's too big, too hectic. I don't dislike it. Uh, I've been there in quite a while, but uh, well, I gotta go in a couple of weeks. Uh, my pay purgatory is going to call me north to get some of that for paperwork for the SRRV. Cebu is, it's got enough people to have the big city amenities, mm -hmm. but yet it doesn't have the huge city problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like living in Manhattan at about a 20th of the cost. Sure. I can walk out of my apartment, the mall, SM City Mall is right across the street, so I can, I bought these glasses last night there. I mean, just, I used to have a hard time finding drone stores. I mean, you would have to drive for 500 miles to another city. Mm -hmm. I would have to go to San Francisco when I lived in Truckee, I was plowing snow up there. I wanted to get a drone. I gotta go to San Francisco. Well, I went to one in Sacramento, it closed down, so I go to San Francisco. I can walk across the street and get drone parts. Sure. And, and like four different malls. I can also, the bus station is right across the street. I can walk to the ferries to get on them. The bus station, I can take a bus to the airport, be there in 30 minutes. I can walk to like five different malls. I mean, we're not talking like strip malls, we're talking huge malls. Yeah. Uh, and they're, the convenience to me is just something I would never have imagined. Mm -hmm. um, so Cebu is, is booming. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and I think Cebu is really opposed to just continue exploding. They got a huge stadium mm -hmm. that they're building here by SMC side. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to attract a lot more Might events. A basketball and, team or two out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope a lot of concerts uh, should make a big difference here. And that well. stuff is coming in phases. I mean, it's they're catching up to Manila type uh, amenities. 
mm -hmm. and I would suspect the Davao is too, because they're they're kind of up and coming too, not in the tower aspect, but you know, it's a bigger city, I believe, as far as the city limits. Yeah, yeah. There's a number of cities I'm starting to hear that are up and coming simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an exciting time to be in the, the Philippines, for, right. for sure. To revisit your question, would I get bored here? Heck no. I, I can get on a ferry and go like nine different places. You know, I'm a, a $100 plane ride from Japan or, or South Korea. Yeah. A couple of hundred to Australia. I mean, there's not just one side of the world. Once you learn to uh, like acclimate yourself into like strange languages and strange food and, and all that stuff, it's like being born again. I mean, not in a religious weird way, but I mean, just your your whole experiential you know outlook changes. Mm -hmm. Sure. And do I miss getting in a car and driving across the United States? Yeah. Uh, like, like camping out in the desert, oh yeah. You know, like hiking in the Sierras, oh yeah. Being in the Rockies or, or whatever. But I've been there, done that. You know, let's say, hey, let's do something else. Yeah, and and like you mentioned, it's very easy to travel around to more islands than you could count in the Philippines. Oh, and the, very easy to travel around Australasia as, mm -hmm. as well. Very inexpensively. I mean, I think it costs far less to get a ticket from mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Cebu to Thailand than it does mm -hmm. from like Sacramento to Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I, okay, so I can get to Tokyo from the Cebu airport for about the same price as a cab ride from LaGuardia to Kennedy Airport crossing Long Island. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know how they do it so cheap. I was not a happy camper, but then again, it comes just in New York. That's what you do. Yeah. So, what do you see for your future? Here, you're retired, but you plan on staying retired? Well, retired in, I, I guess, legal status, but I've always been active and I don't like money in the bank. I don't like dead money or, or hoarded money. I want to make it work. I want to do stuff. I want to just keep active. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to invest in things. I want to find different projects to do. I've got several of them lined up. My problem right now is, like I was saying before, the purgatory. Getting once I get the SRV in place, I'm legal to do all this stuff, but I can't make an income right now because sure. of my tourist visa. Sure, sure. I can't make a red penny, so I kind of have to just do all the groundwork for all these projects that I kind of have planned. And I knew I was gonna, it was going to take some patience. And yes, I'm patient, but I don't <laughs> I think I don't think you're very patient. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so all right, like, I've been out it. All right. Okay. That's right. I so. Admit. Uh, what's it been like making friends here? It's, I'm not really a, a gregarious type person by nature, but I'm not antisocial either. Mm -hmm. I think most people would find it pretty easy to make friends. I mean, there's all kinds of social functions. You and I both are at internations. Yeah. That's one way to meet people. You'll run into people just walking through the malls. Um, and strike up a conversation. Just it's like California used to be, you know, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Hey, how you doing? I was, I'd spend 30 minutes talking to a clerk I didn't even know in a 7-Eleven about some off-the-wall thing. That you know, it doesn't happen too much anymore, and it's still that way here. Yeah. Especially the expat community is pretty small. It's it's like a small town. Especially in out. Cebu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so. Well, like, in Dumaguete too. I mean, those guys are really tight down there. Absolutely. That's that's in part why I don't want to be in Dumaguete because I don't want to be around too many expats. I hear you. I kind of like that they're <laughs> spread out a little bit, even though the expats in Dumaguete seems like a lot of good people there. Oh, I, the guys down there are great. I mean, but it's just a little too. You wanted it, to leave too the busy. West. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't. <laughs> well, it's not so much that. It's just that I, I kind of get the feeling that they're like they'll call each other every day and meet down at the coffee shop or Bogarts or whatever, and it's. it's mm -hmm. I'm too busy for that. Sure. And I'm not being a snob. I'm just saying I, I got a lot of stuff to do, and, and sometimes I'm just not up to it. Yeah, I, I, I understand. So when you say you bump into people at the mall, is that expats or Filipinos? Mm -hmm. People I know. I mean, yeah, I just... And it doesn't happen every day, but it, it happens often enough, especially at a place like Ayala Center, because that's where everybody kind of comes to get their higher echelon business done you know it just seems to be where everybody ends up uh, 
you know, hey, how you doing? Like, um, it's happened to me three different times. And I thought it was, you know, pretty cool. Yeah. In a, in a city this size, you don't expect that to happen. Yeah, I think, you know, big malls like Ayala, they're just kind of like a central place where so many people it's wind up going. It's the town going. square. Yeah. It is, yeah. So it's really going back to like and Thank 80s, God it's 90s. covered because you end up like this. <laughs> right, right. All right, Bart, so I got some quick questions for you. I don't want you to overthink it. Right. Say the first thing that comes to your mind in about 20 words or less. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> All right, first question is, what do you miss most about the U.S.? Being able to travel around. Okay. What do you miss least about the U.S.? The anger and the total lack of perspective. Okay. In comparison, what do you love most about the Philippines? The warm people, the openness, the drive to constantly get better. Okay. And what's driving you most crazy about the Philippines? Cab drivers. Cab drivers. All right, more, uh, more than 20 words. Uh, you got to tell us a, just a quick story what happened today as an example. I need to teach a navigation class here because, I mean, I'll tell them to go to a building. You would think in the States that, you know, if I ask you to go to the St. Francis or somewhere in San Francisco, mm -hmm. oh, sure, no problem. I, I ask them to go to fairly, and it may be a lost in translation kind of thing, and I'm not, I'm not getting down on the taxi drivers at all. A little bit. No, it, it's, it's a matter of the Filipinos have a different system of giving directions. Mm -hmm. It's like, right. it's not that formal here. Yes, all right, so, so I'm gonna tell you uh, also why I think it's a problem here. So you hop in a cab and you tell mm -hmm. a taxi driver to go somewhere that they don't know right. where it is. If that happened in most countries, they would just put it in Google Maps on their phone and be good to go. Mm -hmm. Here though, most people don't just pay for unlimited internet plan, they pay for load. Right. So if they're having to do that all day long, punching that into Google Maps, that's just gonna kinda take away you know, a good amount of their salary right. for them. So I think that they don't want the extra cost is why they don't do it. But I think the thing that I don't understand is where we are at One Nido Tower, it's a 20 some story building that is gold. Mm -hmm. It's probably the only gold building on the front right, right by, you know, in Cebu Business Park, which mm -hmm. is one of the most popular areas in all of Cebu. Right. I don't know how they can't know how to find a building like this. Well, here's another thing. I'm gonna Love you taxi drivers, so I'm sorry. But. Yes, and I, I do too. I, and I'm gonna come to their defense here because this is where the, the technology is kind of overlapping. They've only had cell phones here for, what, 10 years? And a lot of them still, they have them, but the technology is still like brand new to them. So not all phones are, you know, the latest I mean, how long have they even had to learn how to read maps? I mean, this is not a, what I call it, an instinctive thing. I mean, I'm a pilot, so I mean, I, you know, bird's eye view kind of thing is, is, is normal to me. I don't expect that of other people. I would just teach the landmarks and street signage would help too. That I can, Cebu. That's a little tricky. Mandawe, street signage, <laughs> please. Yeah. Because I have a hard time figuring out which streets which, but it's yes. all good. I'm, I love it here. I love the taxi. I mean, it's, I mean, taking a taxi here is a bargain and it's way less of a headache than it is in the United States or Europe or South America or anywhere else I've ever been. Love to the taxi drivers. Just let's get a system going here. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to walk in the rain anymore. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Well, Bart, it's good to finally have you on the channel. I appreciated all your Sir support John, um, over the years. Well, it's been that dreaded day for you where I contribute to the demise of your channel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Uh, and guys, as always, appreciate you taking the time to watch and take care. Cut! Cut. <laughs>